Hey everyone, there's a lot going on, and uh, a lot of my parts showed up, so it's time to basically put this guy down and start wrenching. This is my 2022 Honda Grom, and these are the parts I'm trying to get on it. I got the six disc uh, clutch upgrade from TST. Um, actually, that might be Sec Machine Racing SMR. I got the 60% stiffer uh, clutch springs. I got the Chimera clutch plate, and I got some doodads. I also got the Grom Beardo, shout out to Grom Beardo, oil pump. And uh, I got some replacement gaskets in that FedEx envelope. I was going to do everything by putting the bike down, but instead of doing that, I'm just going to drain the oil and then get the clutch basket out. So we're draining the oil on this guy. I got the 22 uh, Honda Grom lifted on the back. I got some stains from the last time I let out the oil to make this better for myself is place a rag right there to catch all the oil. The second machine racing clutch upgrade, six disc. I got all the discs. I'm just going to separate them into threes. Maybe put them in the corners. I'm not gonna delay the process. I'm gonna start putting oil in here. It's one. Is this the content you guys want? Blood for the blood gods. Blood for the blood gods. Well, I'm gonna let those sit now. I'm using the Motul 10W40. Now, let's go back to the actual bike. Okay. Truth. Let's not lose my washer. And put this uh, away because I'm not putting this boy back on so that's my new Zeta um, I got I, I think I got this from TSD Industries website or maybe Steady Garage but it's basically just a red red oil drain plug it's magnetic so I guess that's cool oh yeah magnetic but <laughs> Nothing's magnetic in this thing. Oh, it's a lot lighter too. There's a little hole in there. That's nice. Little hole. Don't make any jokes. I'm going to start taking off this after I disconnect my um, clutch lever. I'm going to box cut into, into this and uh, try to make some spots for um, the different screws. So if there's more than this many screws, I'm gonna be like actually mad. The disconnected clutch lever. Alright, so I got the clutch lever off. Now it's time to get all these little ones off. I just Damn it, I gotta get back up. This is gonna suck if this is all have all the all the more. One, oh, two, three, four, five, six. This is quite a lot. It might make sense to take off my entire rear set, or at least let it hang. How do people do this? I'm a uh, just loosening the bolts now. Well, I'm done loosening them. I'm just taking them on so I can get to the clutch basket. Making sure, like the autistic man I am, I'm putting them away in their own little spots in a cardboard piece. I'm not taking the oil filter out because I already replaced the oil filter less than like about 200 miles ago. So I'm not going to really mess with it. Wow. This tool is actually handy. <laughs> it's going around my brake pedal. So I'm just going to fast forward. If there's anything of interest, I'm going to like these guys over here. I'll, I'll turn it back on. See ya. All right. I promise to come back. The screw that's on the bottom left here. And I think there's one more on the left. The screw on the bottom left, I wasn't able to get really easily with the, what I was using before. 
So all I used was this ratchet um, and this one, well, this eight millimeter attachment. And I used, I shoved it in through the bottom left here and then I kind of loosened it, right? I just used it to loosen it. And then I, uh, I kind of finagled with this for a little bit. That wasn't really doing anything. And now I've just come down to the point where I'm using my hands to unthread it. So this one is kind of painful, but you know, we're trying to make progress out of here. And that is progress. If you don't have one of these swivel sockets, you are not going to be able to get to that bolt. That bolt right there, focus. Yeah, that bolt down there that's out of focus. Yeah, you need a swivel socket to get in there. All right, good news for those who don't have a swivel socket. You at the very least get an extension into there. You got like a four or five inch extension. And then with all your force, you got this much leeway, all right, to try to, um, you know, notch by notch. I might need an actual bigger extension. All right, here we go. I don't know why I have this, but let's see if it'll work. That is very handy. Wow. Engineering right here. And we did it, boys. The impossible is possible with the right set of tools. All right, I think I got all eight bolts out. Does that not look pretty? Okay. <laughs> okay. I have no clue what's about to happen. My gears have been soaking forever. You know how we are. We hit things with a mallet. And there we go. First thing I'm going to do is take off the clutch plate. I'm going to take the whole basket off, but I'm going to take off the clutch plate and put this bearing into the freezer like everyone says. Oh, I forgot about this. Either you put it in gear or you jam something um, in between your actual gears that's softer. I guess while I'm here, I'm going to remove this and clean it off. We do not want to lose these. Um, put these away somewhere. Actually, no, I'll leave them as they are and put, put the whole thing over to the left. I'll do the top left first. Not that I need these because I'm replacing them all. Well. Getting that off is going to be impossible. <laughs> I started spinning it and it spun. So I looked it up online, why this thing is spinning. Um, or, um, they say put it into gear. So how are you gonna do that when the clutch plate is out? So I gotta reinstall the springs in the clutch plate. They say it looks like it's Loctited. It doesn't even look like the original bolt. We're gonna see what happens here.
cannot tell if I'm moving the clutch or if it's releasing. <laughs> Okay, so I ended up um, dropping the bike back wheel down, all right? And I'm realizing that I think I need my wife to help me with this, to get on the bike, press the back brake, and then I can yank the 47 foot pound nut off of this thing because otherwise I'm just wasting my time. When I was putting this one back on, after getting the bearing out in the freezer situation, um, they're not lying. This lifter plate will pop, will break. It broke under some tension. So 60% screws, that thing would have broken. Easy peasy. Well, now you know. That's what you get with the stock lifter plate. That was unfortunate. Now, I have no clue what this is, but... Oh, it comes right out. Let's not mess this up. There is a... A top washer that's apparently magnetic and on the back of this thing you can see some of my escapades on this thing Jesus put some green marks here so I'll know that it's oriented up when I'm putting the clutch basket back on um, so while I'm here it's time to do the oil pump Here's my Grom Beardo oil pump, and nice of him to uh, leave me a little metal Grom Beardo on it. Um, came with the OEM stuff. I'm gonna put the old one in here, and I might as well, since I have this bag, put my clutch-related stuff in here too. All the old screws, I mean springs, and unfortunately the broken clutch plate. <clears throat> And now, I need to figure out how to get this out without losing these washers. So, I got one washer out. <clears throat> Two, three. These, because it's such a quick and easy job, I am not going to um, store them in my little solution. Right down here, ladies and gentlemen. This is an OEM oil pump. I'm looking for if I'm missing any washers, and there are. Look at that, and a screw. The Grump Beardo one does not have those little washer looking thingies, little tubes, but it does have the screw, right? And uh, I think that's all I need, so thank you, Grum Beardo. Little charm he put on. Gone. And now we gotta snake this through. First, let's put these back in. So one goes on the top left. The other one goes in the bottom like this, all right? And then one went on after. So snake it in, see what we can do.
that is as easy as it gets. Okay. This, as I recall, goes right here. I don't know why. And my bolts. All by hand. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. See these teeth? I think the metal was pushing against it, uh, against this plastic. The plastic is part of the actual uh, pump, and so I had to get these teeth in line with the with the metal teeth back there. All right, let me get this back up. So we got our clutch basket with the top pointing this way. I don't know if that matters. Now we're just going to put things off to the side and put them back together in a bit. Don't need these, so I'll put them to the left. All right, so just like they had it set up here, kind of messed it up. Um, you want it to start with one of these actual clutch discs and the middle discs in between. So on the outsides, both sides should have the darker. And I've been soaking these for a while, so let's see how this goes. Riveting, right? Ghetto oil pan. <laughs> okay. Now the six discs are in. Try to get this guy on. Um, what? Well, that's where he was uh, sleeping. There is wa a washer here. This is going to take a long time, isn't it? I see one disc out of the way, all the way down there. There we go. I moved just a single bottom disc, and I have a feeling this will just slide on. I can't tell if it's in flush. So I keep trying and trying, and I think this is as level as it's gonna get. I really can't see it. I don't wanna touch it too much. I think it's fine. Hopefully it is. Um, we'll see. Oh no. The disc started coming out. So bad. You basically need two hands. There we go. Oh, that was so hard. Now that I got that, I gotta get my wife back. What I need her to do is to get on the bike again, um, hold the brake down, the rear brake, make sure that this thing doesn't move while this is in gear. Hold it. That's it.
This is actually almost impossible. So I'm just gonna do it because nobody has time for this. There's just no way. Best thing I could do right now is just dump it like this and wait. <sighs> Luckily this side's fine, but the part where the engine pump is, it's fucking nuts. I don't know where the, how, how to get to the filter at this point. Fuck it. Seated to me. There was somewhere over here, there was a clip, and I, I guess it was just like this. Maybe it was up here. I'm not sure. I'll have to take a look at the video. I'm going to review the footage and see where that little piece fell off of. Uh. See, it turned out that all it was was this that fell out. There was the top one still stayed, and this um, plastic piece. Yeah, that plastic piece fell out. Whatever. Let's go. Okay. Now I'm just going to tighten up all the bolts. No big deal, just like last time. Um, I don't need to record it, so see ya. Okay, it's time to stand her back up. <sighs> Alright, so now that's all that's left is filling up with oil and doing 20 miles. See how it goes. And maybe a clutch adjustment, but I'm not going to show that. I think I'm pooped. All right, thanks for for watching. Um, if I, I'll I'll just get some uh, impressions after it's done, how it feels like. But until then, hopefully, hopefully till then, that I still see you. But if not, see ya. See, I don't know if anyone cares, but this is how far I had to extend my thing, so I have a little bit of play, and then it catches around here. And I got my pull, so I got a little bit of play. It's not super to spec, but that's the the depth I got here. Put that back on. And when I was adjusting the chain, I don't know if I did the right thing, but or the tension back here, I ended up um. It's not that good looking. I moved it fairly a lot from that middle down towards this side. I only got like four threads left. And I don't even know if this holds the clutch right. Hopefully I don't have to, you know, get a shorter, you know, wire. Probably not, but this is feeling pretty good right now. All right, hard to pull. A little bit of tension. And uh, just to prove it.
is not per too bad. All right, we'll check it out soon. So I'm just sitting in the car right now. Um, I just wanted to say that I got on it. Um, it's kind of hard to switch gears. I don't think the clutch is disengaging all the way. Actually, I know it's not disengaging all the way when I pull it all the way in. Um, it's still grabby and uh, trying to pull the bike forward in gear one and two. So I'm thinking that um, I misadjusted the tension on the lever and also, you know, by the handlebar and also by the engine. So I got to tweak it. Let's see what I can do. Um, I just wanted to capture this thought so I don't forget. 24 hours later. Um, I want to show you guys a little moto buddy I got. It's a little keychain. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> it's got a little Lego man in there. But he's now my new keychain for the Honda Grom. Thought that was a little cute. Anyway, so what we're doing today is we're just going to really adjust the clutch cable tension. Um, I'm going to try my best. Uh, I saw something online where if you lift the back wheel and then you um, start adjusting from the clutch's side, I mean the clutch cover side, the right side of the bike, it's probably better off for you that way um, because you're going to be able to see exactly when that clutch is grabbing <clears throat> and then make that adjustment on your lever as the last thing rather than trying to adjust on a lever at first. So without further ado, I haven't let out this much, but that if you're able to see, it's kind of hard to see, but there's only like one or two, two, how many? There's like four threads in there. I want it to be more evened out. So I'm gonna move it in more. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this up, all right? That's all it takes. Now I can just set it about halfway. And then now I'm going to tighten this. All right, I need to keep tightening it. I think that's good enough. Down here, I have a lot more room to work with. Um, if I could see, goddammit. See on the left here, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven threads. And on the outside, I have, I can't even count it, enough threads. All right, I lowered it quite a bit. Now towards the center, you should be able to see these two nuts. You got this nut and this nut. And if you uh, loosen them up, they sit on the other ends of this tube. It will allow this uh, clutch cable to move left and right. I'm pulling my clutch lever right now. I'm going to loosen them. That way they, they're further on each side, away from each other. And then um, I'm going to start tightening this side and paying attention to my back wheel to see if it starts spinning. The second I put it down in the first gear, you can see it's moving. So, now I need to adjust these so it doesn't move anymore. I think I have everything backwards. Maybe I should have gone the other direction. To where the clutch releases. Now if I pull in the clutch, nothing. It probably isn't even going. I did it wrong. I'm going to let it air out so I don't suffocate myself in here. And for better audio, but I made a mistake. The more I loosen this out, of course the clutch is always going to be engaged. Keep moving this until the clutch disengages and then return it back. So I, I went in the wrong direction, let's just say that. But I also don't believe that it's going to keep, it's going to work. Because I'm going to go towards the very end of this, right? That's the very end right here. And I'm going to slowly move this over and see if the clutch disengages. I'm going to flip the bike around so the exhaust goes outside. This is too much. Let 
the reason I flipped it around, I don't want to die from the exhaust fumes. Oh yeah, the kickstand needs to go up. I don't have that much space over here, but I'll try to do, do what I can. You can see the back wheel's already turning. Still, see if it's good on camera. Yep, visible. And now, I just got a wrench. struggling quite a bit right now because no matter what I do the clutch is engaged uh, looks like I gotta get back to the drawing board one eternity later and this does not require the bike to be on like I thought the whole back wheel thing doesn't matter I made that up apparently on most of these types of clutches um, even in neutral when people are pulling the throttle the back wheel will go um, so if it's on a center stand, no friction, uh, you can still see the back wheel moving, even in neutral, even when the clutch is pulled all the way in, so you're disengaging the clutch. What you really want to be able to do is like move with your finger up as much as you can, right? And then grab with the cable. So I can't really tell if this is a good amount. You know, I don't like that it's fully bottomed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hope that moving it, loosening it, will work out when I go do the fine adjustment up there. I guess I'm going to leave it like that. Right now I see one, two, three, four threads <clears throat> from the left side. Um, you can't really see it, but there's a lot of wiggle room here. Like I could probably just remove the cable. Actually, it's harder than than it seems but I'm gonna go play with the throttle now and see what I can do so now there's all this play with the throttle and it doesn't start catching till about here so I'm going to move this out I have a dime and a nickel and apparently a nickel is two millimeters thick and your free play should go from anywhere from two to three millimeters so I feel it grabbing right there and a nickel does fit it's about two to three millimeters so I'm pretty happy with the way I have it set up which I don't know if you can see but it's four threads here and I got like four threads on the inside to work with so I think this is a pretty good setup just gotta cover it up and uh, go back down there all right so if I pull let me see how this looks I'm going to move the handlebars to the right. Now straight. No, I think it's pretty good. Let's go uh, test it out. So I got this much free play. I think that's fine. I can feel the clutch pull. Feels pretty good. I can't really tell about the 60% stiffer clutch, but oh well. And now, only thing left to do is to show you how it works. So right now, clutch is held all the way in. I'm giving throttle. And you can see I'm not really being pushed forward. So I'm going to start releasing the clutch without giving any throttle. Let's see if we stall. Oh, did you see that? It starts gripping around here. If I put my feet up, it starts really pushing, pulling me. If I let go really slowly, don't even have to give it throttle, and we didn't stall. I'm going to dump it right now and see what happens. Whoops. And try to push me forward. Um, I'm dumping it, and I'm holding on. Ready, set.
I can't tell if the clutch is sticking or what. Took the bike around um, on like two different rides, adjusted, and I'm I'm not sure how it's gonna be, but shifting is always an issue. Um, but I feel better about it after the second ride, and uh, I mean, I already tightened up the bottom bolts down here and also the handlebar clutch lever adjuster thingy. So now on to our last order of business, which is putting on our axle sliders. We got some of these TST red black axle sliders, anodized red. We're gonna put them, they can still see nowhere. Okay, so I'll just keep them around here. Booty shot. Um, I don't think I have to like, I think I might have to suspend the front wheel somehow, I have no clue. So let's get the back wheel done first. Should be the harder one. Before I pull these off, I want to figure out what the torque spec is on these, which I could only do that if I use my phone. So I'll be right back with the torque spec. All right, so it turns out that these over here are 44 foot pounds, uh, 14 millimeters on this side three-fourths on this side and now these I think I got it move it by hand so they come like this but all I got to do is take the Delrin puck off the end and then seat it Actually, I don't even think I needed to seat the Delrin puck. I think I might still need this hardware. I take back what I said about not needing this. You do need it. <laughs> Just 
don't want to lose the wheel. Not so easy. Ready? I'm going to hold the wheel in place. I'm going to pull. Three, two, one. Well, there goes my chain tension. And here's the axle. And now, pop the big bad boy in. So close. I just gotta get it through this hole. There we go. Now just the final slams. Okay. Alright, reseat this. Put this on my boy. So like before, it's 14 on this left side, and 3 fourths on the right, switch everything around, the torque is 44 foot pounds. And that, there's 44 foot pounds. Screw the dome and flex in. Sliders. I'm not happy with this being loose. So <laughs> to figure out how to fix this in a second. Because the other one's not like that at all. This doesn't move, but this moves. I think I need to loosen it again. Seems loose. So now I'll push it forward. Hard side, soft side. Same here. It's loose now on this side. Now it's not. Now it's loose. So. All right, they're both tight. Sound like a click, but to be certain, that's a click. 44 foot pounds. Now, it doesn't move, and doesn't move. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the front. Except we don't got all these pieces to deal with. One side off. I'm worried. What's gonna happen? 
I think I have to call a lifeline. Yeah, I'm going to have to call a lifeline. I'm going to get my wife. This is going to be something. Alright, we got it. I'm talking to the camera. Oh. Did you forget to record? Yeah. One minute, 37 seconds later.